I am Professor Maja, your TPN370 lecturer. I hope that you have submitted your assignment one, which, which is due on the 17th of May, 2023. And your assignment two will be due on the, and on the 21st of June, 2023. In this video, I just want to concentrate on the assessment three or assessment 50, which it is a portfolio. This portfolio serves as an, an examination. You will never sit for any examination. So you need to ensure that you do well in this portfolio because it, it carries 80% uh, towards your final mark. And the 20% will be from assignment one and assignment two. Then this assessment three focus on lesson plans, observation of school activities, assessment by the mentor teacher, reflective assessment, uh, school documents, discussion forum, and teaching practice reflections. And the due date is the 19th September, 2023. The subjects that you have to teach when you go for teaching practice are as follows. The home or first additional language. Home or first additional language depends on what is your home language. For example, let's say your home language is Tswana or Sipedi, or Sizulu, or any, uh, only, any African language. So you can do two lesson plans with two different topics on that particular home language. When you do home language, you don't have to do the additional language, meaning that in this portfolio, you need to do only one language, not two languages. When you do two languages, meaning that we will only mark the lesson plans for only one language. So first additional language might be English or Africans to other students. So you do the same. You do two lesson plans with two different topics for that language. And for first chosen school subject, you need to choose amongst the following subjects, mathematics, social science which consists of history and geography, natural sciences and technology, life sciences which it is a creative arts, physical education, personal and social well-being. And then if you, you are allowed to teach in grade 7, but in grade 7 you only allowed to teach EMS. Why? Because you might find a post in the primary schools and then they might say you need to teach grade 7 EMS. So you are provided that opportunity to do the teaching practice in grade 7, but particularly uh, EMS. And then let's just take an example of social sciences. We know that it consists of history and geography. Let's say you want to teach geography, meaning that you are going to teach two lessons with two different topics in geography. Do not mix geography and history. I hope um, I understand, you understand me well. Then in this portfolio, you've got three declaration forms. This declaration forms uh, stands for three subjects that you, you will be choosing. One declaration form will be, for example, for your language, the other one for your first chosen subject, the other one will be for second chosen subject. If you miss one, meaning that it will mean that uh, you did not do that subject and you will never get marks for that, you will be penalized for the two uh, lesson plans, so you will look, lose marks. Make sure that you really do the correct thing because the assignment, is, I mean the tutorial letter 103 is very clear 
Uh, so you need to follow it uh, uh, correctly. This declaration forms need to be signed by, by you, by your mentor teacher, the school principal, and a school stamp. The declaration forms without school stamps, meaning that you were not at school. And then we are also going to see if you cut and paste the school stamp. Remember that if you do this fraudulent, you will be in trouble. You might be suspended because of the, the, you know, the fraudulent things that you have done in this module. May you please play safely and go to your teaching practice uh, uh, school or uh, placement school and teach for five weeks. The structure of your lesson plan. I will take only one lesson plan and it will uh, give an example for all six uh, lesson plans, meaning that you need to have six lesson plans in your uh, portfolio. Uh, the, the, the first structure in your lesson plan is where you need to fill in the general information. May you please check the marks in the general information. Make sure that you fill in that you complete uh, the necessary uh, information that is needed. Because if you don't do that, you might lose marks. So make sure that you do the correct thing. And then in this first structure, you've got the aim. What is the aim of the lesson? You need to state exactly what you want to teach. For example, let's say you want to teach a, 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 the present tense. So you will write the lesson aims to teach learners the present tense so that they can be able to use the correct verb tenses in, in sentences. But immediately when you write it like uh, the aim is to teach past tense, it is vague. So you need to make sure that it is well uh, structured and well uh, uh, written. And then what will be your objective? Remember that from the aims, you need to, get, to have objectives. So meaning that your objective in this aim uh, will be learners will be able to use the correct verb tenses in sentences. And you, you, you might have even more than one. You, you might have uh, uh, two to three objectives because in, in a lesson, you, you want to evaluate uh, different types or di different aspects in the language. You, you might want to, uh, to evaluate the vocabulary or maybe the spelling or even maybe the pronouns. It, will dep it depends on your, your, your teaching plan. So that's why I'm saying you will have one aim, but you might have more than one or two objectives in one lesson. Then the teaching method. What types or what, how many, or what kinds of methods do you want to use in that particular lesson? And remember that when you choose methods, these methods should suit the aim that you have chosen. For example, let's say you want to use the, the group work. It might be a, a teaching method or teaching strategy or a teaching approach or storytelling role play, question and answer, and individual seat work. And then you, there is a space where you have to explain why did you choose that uh, particular method or particular methods. And then I just want to make you aware that you might use more than one method in one lesson. I will show you in the following stages of the lesson, of the lesson plan. Now is the introductory phase. You want to introduce your lesson. What do you do in this case? You need to think, how will you get the learners ready for what you want them to learn? For example, 
you want your learners to tell a story about doing shopping on Saturday. So you need to prepare for the lesson by having the teaching aids ready, the LTSN. What are you going to make sure that learners understand what you are teaching? Then, firstly, you need to understand that learners should be engaged in each and every lesson. So you need to engage learners in real life activities by demonstrating how they do uh, the shopping. And they like it so much when they do the demonstration and they learn they will never forget about that. Do not do, uh, do that by doing the question and answers only. Because learners can get bored of uh, answering the questions without an action. So when you do that, when you, you, you prepare your lesson, you need to think how long is it going, uh, this activity going to take? And which questions will you ask? Remember that maybe you have been given a two, one hour for each lesson. So whatever the activities you are preparing should be fitted within the, the one hour. So you need to prepare beforehand how uh, each and every step, uh, how many minutes is going to take. Then the main part of the lesson, activity one. Again, how long will this activity take? You need to write it down. There is a space in the portfolio where you have to write the minutes uh, for how many uh, minutes can you, this activity take. For example, remember that your aim and even the uh, doing shopping on Saturday should go together your activity. So you write the verbs in the present tense that describe shopping. Remember that your aim is to teach present tense. So write those uh, verbs in present tense. For example, verbs like buy, pay, take, put, etc. You can write them down where it might be on the smart board or maybe on the chalkboard. Or you can even show the learners the YouTube video which is having the present tense uh, uh, verbs like this. And then from there, you will divide your learners into groups. You ask that in your, your, your lesson, in the main part of the lesson. Divide them into groups or pairs and let them discuss how they do this uh, shopping and encourage them to use the present tense. They must see those words they, uh, they are going to use in the lesson. And then insist uh, to them that they must be in present tense. Uh, let's say maybe you have introduced the present tense previously, they know what is present tense. And then you must think of which guiding questions are you going to ask these learners. And when you do this, what are the learners doing? And then what will the learners say? So you need to write that in the, in the portfolio lesson, it shows that. There is a place where it shows what the learner's activity should be. Activity two, you also write the time that you will spend in this activity. Now, in this activity, let learners tell their stories. Remember that they sat down in groups, they discussed. This one told the, 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 the peer that, you know, on Saturday, I buy chips for my mom. And then after that, I go to the counter and pay, you know, let them now uh, tell the whole class the stories about what they do on their shopping. But Remember, your aim is uh, to insist the, the usage of present tense. Don't forget that. And then when they are done, let them role play what they are doing when they shop on Saturday. You know, can you see that you have already used three teaching methods? At first, you use the group activity. Now, the storytelling. Now is the role playing. You know, your, your lesson will be engaging. And even in this activity, 
bear in mind the questions that you will ask so that they can make the learning you know interesting and then assess the learner's language usage then activity three you also think of how long the, uh, will this activity take and then in this activity you can let learners to work in pairs to build sentences now what do they have practiced orally when they tell stories, when they role play? Now they are going to build the sentences using their present tense. Remember that they did the exercise on this. Now they do understand what present tense is and the way you, you guided them through questioning and even through corrections. They understand what is present tense now then which questions will you ask? And then what will the learners do during that time? And then when you conclude your lesson, already you have done how many teaching methods? You've got four teaching methods now. Now, when you, con you conclude your lesson, you can do the quick quiz or class discussion. Then in this uh, conclusion, you can let learners to ask each other's questions about their sentences and then you need to to tell how long will this take because if you prolong it it will take forever and then which questions will you ask then we've got assessment activity in this portfolio you need to explain and eat or attach the activity that the learners have done and remember that uh, let's let's say learners have written that activity within the the one hour period so you just attach it there is a space where you can attach it you attach the activity into the portfolio or you can write it down but i don't think there is a space the best thing is to attach it and then how will you know if the aim and objectives of the lesson were achieved meaning that you need to ask the questions that you have pre prepared beforehand so that you can be able to assess whether your aim has been achieved and even the objectives have been achieved. Is this activity going to be informal or formal or informal? That is the decision that you have to take here during the lesson planning. You don't just uh, do that you know, abruptly in the classroom. Then homework. You even need to prepare whether do you think that lesson needs homework or not. If the, whole, the, the lesson needs homework, you need to write down or attach the homework that you will give for this lesson. If you have, writ, you have written that, you will give learners homework. So I need to see that homework in the portfolio. So, and you need to also to write why are you allocating this homework? And then how long will it take the learners to complete it? Will they need any resources or help? So you need to indicate that in the portfolio. Enrichment. Remember that in the class, we've got different learners with different learning abilities. Those who are gifted or the first, the, the, the first learners, you need to give them enrichment uh, activity because they will be bored because they will finish up the activity quickly and start making noise uh, while the others are still writing. So give them enrichment activity so that they can be busy and then you don't just give uh, them enrichment activity which will never help with uh, will never help them with anything. Even that enrich, mean, uh, enrichment activity should focus on your aim and even the objective. And then what about those who have barriers to learn? You need to go to them, assist them individually so that they can, under, can understand what they are, they are doing because you can leave them on their own, really they will get lost and you will never get, get anything uh, uh, from them. So they need your attention you may really attend them uh, individually so that they can understand your, your activity. Remember that when you are teaching, there are key words that are very much important in your lesson. So you need to underline those key words and or you need to emphasize them. 
and then let you can let the learners to look the meanings of these words so that they can understand what do they mean. And then there is a space again where you have to attach the teaching aids you use during the lesson for learners to understand your lesson. Please, in this space, do not attach the activities. Do not attach the learners' activities or the, uh, the classworks or homework. I need the teaching aids, the LTSM that you have used to let the, the to make the lesson uh, understandable or easier to learners. And then do not attach the textbook covers or caps. That is not a, a, a learning aid. Yes, caps can assist you when you do the lesson planning, but not when you are teaching in the classroom uh, to, 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 to simplify the, le the, the lesson to the learners. Then there is assessment of lesson presentation, which is practical teaching. This is for use by the mentor teachers. Let your mentor teacher evaluate your lesson when you are teaching, and then the mentor teacher has to add comments and the signature and the school stamp. There is a space in the, in the portfolio for that. And then the reflective self-assessment is you. You reflect on the lesson that you have presented. Answer all the reflective questions. They will assist you in your future lesson plan and even uh, lesson teaching. Do not write not applicable. Immediately when you write not applicable, you lose marks. And then we've got observation of school activities, which is section A, it is there in the portfolio. You need to observe and comment on the following aspects. This one, you observe them, you might observe them for, for one or two weeks. Remember that you have to be at, at school for five weeks. Let's say during the first week you observe these activities, you don't write anything in your portfolio. The second week, uh, if you are not clear, you observe, but the third week you are now, now clear, you sit down, uh, you write everything in your portfolio. What are you going to observe? Disciplinary protocol followed at school. Observe it and you write it down. There is a, 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 a space where you have to write how do the school dis uh, 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 discipline uh, learners or the discipline, the, the protocol of the, of the school. But you, you need to do that after you have observed it. Even the extramural activities. Which extramural activities are there at school? What is happening? When is, let's say, maybe singing? When are they doing the singing or the practice of uh, musical choral choirs and everything? Or any extramural activities? Look at the vision and mission of the school. Write it down and put it there in that space you have, it has, uh, is provided. And then, you know, you need to observe the classroom environment and the diversity of learners in your classroom. What is happening? Are there a lot of uh, diverse learners? What kind of diversity is there? How is the classroom environment? Is it an overcrowded classroom or learners, you know, who, who are really uh, good for teaching and learning? You need to explain that. And then you need to put two photographs of learners. May you please do not show the learners' faces. Let's just take the back of the learners. I just want to, uh, to see whether you are in the class, you are teaching the class with learners, not an empty class, because really we have... Uh, experience this kind of things. Students just claim that they've been teaching and there's nothing like that. Okay, I need those two photographs of learners, the back of learners, no faces shown, please. Look at, at the policies that are in place, write them there. There are a lot of policies in the school. There is admission policy, uh, disciplinary uh, policy, HIV and AIDS policy, there, are, there is a lot of policies in the school, so write them down, a few that they are there. And then you need, also need to, to observe how a staff meeting is conducted. I hope the principal will allow you to attend their meetings. If they do not, talk to your mentor teacher so that he or she can explain everything in order to 
to ensure that you, you give the answer of this observation. Section B, you need to explain how you organize your teaching file. You need to have a teaching file. How do you organize it? And describe how you manage and control a class during your teaching. That is classroom management. You need to explain that. And explain how you would conduct your assembly if you, are, you were given the chance to do so. If they conduct assemblies. Sometimes you'll find that they conduct assembly only on Fridays. So observe that and tell us how will you do that if you can be given a chance to conduct your assembly. And then you also name the extramural activity you might manage and explain how will you manage it. And explain how you handle the bullies in your classroom. They are always there. And the school documents. The mentor teacher has to assist you in understanding these documents. There is annual teaching plan. You cannot teach without the teaching annual plan. The program of assessment, learner's attendance register, summary register, asset register, curriculum and assessment policy document, the period register, and teacher's attendance register. There is another activity where you need to interact with your peers in the discussion forum or WhatsApp group and share how you interact with diverse learners in your classroom. You share the interactive teaching strategies you use to teach your specific subject. And then from there, choose one of the strategies you indicated above and explain how you use it in your teaching. There are reflections on your teaching practice in your portfolio. There are questions there. There are open-ended questions. You need to answer those questions to the best of your ability. Please give us as much information as possible. Thank you.